Okay, inferential statistics and hypothesis testing. So statistical significance. In order to prove a relationship between two variables, we set up experiments and interpret the data to look for statistical significance. So that's what the third trial, uh, phase three and FDA testing uh, aims to achieve. That's why there are thousands of people because the larger sample size, uh, the more reliable the data. When a relationship is proven statistically significant, um, this means that our result is most likely due to some factor other than chance. So for example, if we wanna prove that the girls in third grade class performed better on their last test than the boys in the same class did, it would not be enough to take the average of the two subsets and compare. So if we take all of the grades um, of the girls in the class and we average it and say it's an 85, and we average all of the boys' grades in that same third grade class and it's an 84, um, that alone would not be enough uh, to definitively say that the girls performed better than the boys. Um, because there's, it's not statistically significant. It's not proven. So what we have to do is run it through different statistic, um, like statistical analyses. And for this specific example, to eliminate the role of chance in the situation, we would compare the means of two groups using an unpaired t-test. Um, so the t-test is unpaired t-test would just be comparing two averages, like the 84 and the 85, and we're just doing a statistical analysis on it and seeing um, the likelihood of it being up to chance or if it actually is that the girls did better than the guys. So to do this, we choose an alpha value based on how confident we want our results to be. So for 95% confidence, we would choose an alpha of 0 0.05 because the confidence is one minus alpha. Alpha is one minus confidence. So if we choose an alpha of 0 0.05, whatever we get, we'll get either the result is statistically significant or it's not statistically significant. We can say that with 95% confidence if we chose an alpha of 0 0.05. And we could say with 99% confidence if we chose an alpha of 0 0.01. So alpha um, becomes important because when we do our t-test, it spits out a variable known as p, and we take that p-value and we compare it to alpha, and that lets us know if it's statistically significant. Um, so once we choose the alpha, say for 95%, we're going to choose that 0 0.05, we can run whichever test fits. So an unpaired t-test in this case uh, would be the best example. And you do not have to know the statistical tests. You don't have to know which test works best in which situation. Definitely out of the scope of the MCAT. Um, but you should know that a t-test is a very common uh, statistical analysis that's used, especially when we're comparing averages. So like it's used a lot in biology and stuff like that. Uh, but we generate that p-value that I was just talking about. Um, the p-value is the likelihood that we could get these results um, under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. So basically what that means is it's just how likely these results are by chance. Um, <clears throat> that sounds a little bit confusing, but all you have to know is that if the p-value is less than alpha, then that's a good thing. We proved it right. Um, so... The null, there are two different types of hypotheses. Whenever we have hypothesis testing, in this case, we're gonna set up two different hypotheses. So one, either the null hypothesis is true or the alternative is true. So in this case, our null hypothesis would be, there is no statistical significance. There's no difference between the two tests. If they took that same test again, then the boys would probably score more than the girls. It was due completely to chance. That was the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is that the difference in these averages is not caused by chance and the girls will, are actually performing better than the guys. So if the girls took the test again, then they would most likely, we would say with 95% confidence, they would score higher than the boys again. <clears throat> so that would be the alternative hypothesis. Um, so if we use an alpha of 0 0.05 and our unpaired t-test gave us a value of 0 0.043, that's a good thing because our value is smaller than alpha. So we would say that with 95% confidence, the girls in the class outperform the, bo uh, outperform the boys because P is less than alpha. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. So remember the null hypothesis is there is no statistical significance. So because P is less than alpha, we would say that we reject the null hypothesis and the alternative is true, which means that we just proved a statistically significant relationship. Okay, and a little bit more on that, uh, just testing errors. So I'm sure you've heard of maybe false positives and false negatives. 
This has especially been in mainstream media regarding COVID testing, because there are a bunch of new tests that are coming out, new companies putting out different tests. Um, so we look at the false positive and false negative rates. So type one error is also known as a false positive error. So that occurs when a null, when a true null hypothesis is rejected. So remember when I said the alternative hypothesis, we're proving a statistical significance. So when we reject the null hypothesis, we're proving that there's statistical significance. Um, if a type one error is committed, that's a false positive. So we should have accepted the null hypothesis, but we rejected it. And it's represented by alpha. And remember that our confidence value is representative is represented by one minus alpha, which is 90% um, in our test score example. So this is why the smaller the alpha, the larger the confidence, the more likely it is that our data is statistically significant. Um, because 95% confidence is good, 99% confidence is even better. Um, so that p value is going to have to be even smaller because our alpha is going to be 0 0.01 with 99% confidence. Um, and it makes sense that it's it's more confident because our false positive rate is smaller. Alpha is going to be 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.05. So there's even less of a chance that there would be an error committed. Um, and type two errors are false negatives. Um, those occur when we accept the null hypothesis when it's false. So if we predict that there is no statistical significance when there actually is, and that's represented by the Greek letter beta. Um, so that's like alpha and then confidence is one minus alpha. Beta is power, I'm sorry, beta is uh, type two error rate. And then one minus beta is the power of a study, which is the probability of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. Um, so the power is just another factor that we can look at to um, gauge how accurate the study is. So similarly to type one error and the confidence relationship, as the power of a study increases, the chance of a type two error occurring is reduced. Um, so the more, the more powerful a study is, the less likely a false negative would be, which is super important, which is super important um, in regards to like COVID testing, because uh, some would argue that false negatives are a lot more dangerous than false positives, especially um, if you're working in some sort of surgery practice or something like that. So I work in a surgery practice and we do endoscopies and we do a lot of open mouth procedures. So throughout COVID, um, when these rapid machines were just coming out, there was a lot of uh, worry about a false negative rate because false negative rates are so much worse than false positives. If it's a false positive, we would just send them home, um, put another specimen to the lab, and then we would get a negative result and everything would be fine. But if it's a false negative, you could have a potentially positive person, potentially positive patient undergoing an open mouth procedure with people in the room. Um, so a lot of people would argue that false negatives are much more important to pay attention to. The null hypothesis is just the hypothesis that nothing changed. Um, so if we have our two values, if we have our two averages of boys in the class performing on the test and girls in the test, the null hypothesis just says that they performed equally. The, the alternative hypothesis would say that one performed better than the other. The null hypothesis is always just no statistical significance, no change. Because <clears throat> there's always going to be two outcomes whenever we're testing something. It's either going to be the expected outcome or it's not going to be the expected outcome. So the null hypothesis is just the outcome where there's no statistical significance. Okay. A little bit more on reliability and validity. So reliability is the degree to which um, an assessment produces consistent and replicable results. And there are two types of reliability. So there's test retest reliability, which is the reliability of the assessment tool. So say the assessment tool is an exam. The same student being assessed five times should find similar results each time. So um, that's sort of the concept of standardized tests. Um, when people say you bottom out on a standardized test, you're only gonna increase to a certain amount and then you might get stuck. Um, or if you take the same test five times without studying even more, if it's a reliable test, you're gonna score around the same time every time you take it. Um, Inter-rater reliability is how much do different researchers agree in their assessment. So that could be say, if we're going back to the testing example, if it is a subjective uh, scoring, say they're scoring an essay, um, the rubric, the reliability of the rubric, um, two scores should have similar results for reading the same essay. Uh, we have the validity, which is the degree to which the results of a study are truly accurate 
Um, and there are three types of validity. So internal validity is how much the results of the study actually represent the causal relationship between the two variables. So basically how much the results actually are telling us what we want to know. Um, external validity is how accurately the results can be generalized to other situations. So maybe if we have, if we're doing a, a clinical trial about a vaccine, how well can we generalize these results to, in, you know, a situational um, sort of concept? So like, how well will they actually perform in the field as compared to being performed in a lab? Um, and construct validity is the measure of how accurately a measuring tool is collecting the required data. Um, so measuring tool, meaning your methods, your methodology, how well your actual experiment is collecting. So our survey question is the best method for a study, for example, um, maybe the specific study would be better suited for some sort of observational study rather than surveys. <laughs> um, so you don't have to memorize these, but definitely be familiar with them. All right, review time. So 100% of you said C, the correct answer is B, however. So uh, we can definitely go over this. Um, a researcher is hypothesizing that a group of students would perform better on a test in their own classroom than if they took a similar test in a different classroom. She calculates the average test scores in both environments and runs a paired t-test, which gives her a p-value of 0 0.04, which of the following is false. Um, so if you're given the p-value, um, that's like the hardest part. So when you're given the p-value and you're given the confidence of the alpha, all you're doing is comparing the p-value to alpha. So if p is less than alpha, there's going to be a statistic, there's going to be a significant difference. So we have p equals 0 0.04. Let's look at a. There's a significant difference between test scores with 95% confidence. So our p again is, zero, is 0 0.04. 95% confidence, remember um, alpha is just one minus that. So our alpha for that is going to be 0 0.05. So P in this case is less than our alpha. So there is a significant difference. So that statement is true. So that's not the correct answer. Um, and just by that, 100% of you said C, but just from that logic right there, you can eliminate C. Because C says there's no significant difference for any confidence level. But at the 95% confidence level, we do see a significant difference. So A and C are incorrect. Um, and D is there is a significant difference between test scores with 90% confidence. So with 90% confidence, our alpha would then be 0.1 because we're doing one minus 90%, which is 0.9. So in that case, our alpha would be 0 0.1, which again, P is a lot less than that one. So there's definitely a significant difference with 90% confidence. Um, does that kind of make sense? Uh, does anybody want me to explain that again, explain it in a different way? Chris, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, how about A? What, what's wrong with A? You said it's compare the p-value to the alpha, and if p is less than alpha, then it's significant. But yes. what's the confidence? I got the significant part, the first part, but the confidence is yeah. what now? So confidence with 95% confidence is just how they would just give you that so that you can get your alpha. So one minus confidence is gonna be alpha. So because we have 95% confidence, you know that your alpha is 0 0.05. You compare P to that and you see that P is less. So you know that there is a significant difference between the test scores, but the question asks for which of the following is false. So A is not correct. No, I didn't get that. So the alpha is one minus 0 0.04 because, or one minus, why is, what's the alpha? Alpha is one minus 95%, one minus confidence. So if you take that confidence level would be 0.95 and you add alpha, it's always gonna equal one. Mm -hmm. So one minus 0 0.95 is 0 0.05. Yep, and that's your alpha value. So you that's the value that you always take if you talk about hypothesis testing, you take that value and you compare it to the p-value. So we would perform a bunch of like statistical analyses and it would give us this value of 0 0.04. So we can compare that to our alpha. And if it's less than point, if it's less than our alpha, then that means our results were significant. But we can change our levels of confidence. So, so 0 0.05 is, is greater than 0 0.04. So what does that mean? So that means that there is a significant relationship. Oh, that's is, all that means. Yes. 
confidence was given. Okay, all right, got it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah, so you can change the confidence and you notice that as the confidence increases, when we go from 95% confidence to 99% confidence, our alpha decreases. So it'll go from 0 0.05 to 0 0.01. So now with 99% confidence, that same p-value 0 0.04 is less, is greater than our alpha now. So we cannot say that there's a statistically significant relationship between the two. There's not a significant difference between the test scores with 99% confidence. We can say with 95% confidence because it gives us a higher alpha value. So there's more, more wiggle room. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I first read this question, I thought both B and C are false. And that's why I couldn't even, you know, pick a pick, like choose an answer on the poll. I understand why B is false because 0 0.04 is greater than 0 0.01. Mm -hmm. But for C, it's saying there's no significant difference for any confidence level. I mean, there's clearly a significant difference for the 95% confidence level and the 90% confidence level. So wouldn't that be false as well? Um, wait. Yeah, you might be right. Hold on. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yep, C is also correct. Yeah. Cool. Good catch. I love that you're paying attention like that. I'm going to fix that before I get the, I'm going to fix that before. Okay, I why, is C, why is C correct now? Because it says there is no significant difference for any confidence level, but we just said that there is a significant difference for the confidence level for A. Um, so I, I misworded that. It should say there is, there's, it should be worded differently. I, oh, I, I confuse okay. my own negatives. But yes, that, that, is, that is absolutely correct as well. 